From the truth about their treasures to the efficiency of their clothing choices, today we look at 10 strange pirate traditions you didn't know about. Number 10. Patch Logic One of the most iconic accessories featured on pirates is the classic black eye patch. In many modern depictions of the savvy sea-bound thieves, these eye patches appear with near comical frequency. But this isn't due to inaccurate interpretations or a high rate of eye injuries among pirates. The reason so many buccaneers opted to wear this sight-impairing adornment was to keep one eye constantly adjusted for night vision. In addition to needing to scout the seas at night, pirates would spend much of their time coming and going from the ship's interior. This came in especially handy when engaging with enemy ships. This isn't to say that no pirates lost an eye during their travels, though. After all, raiding and pillaging on the high seas isn't the safest occupation. Number 9. Red Flags The foreboding image of a skull and crossbones against a black flag has become synonymous with pirates. Known widely as the Jolly Roger, this insignia actually varied greatly from ship to ship. For example, Blackbeard's ship would sail a version that showed a skeleton raising a toast to the devil while spearing a dripping heart. Other incarnations might feature symbols like hourglasses, scarlet skeletons, or men standing atop a pile of skulls. But the Jolly Roger, for all its infamy and variations, wasn't the worst flag a sailor could witness from an oncoming pirate ship. Much more frightening than any bone-adorned banner was a flag of crimson. The blood-red flag acted as a ruthless warning for ships under siege, as it signified that the attacking ship would show no mercy. It implied that upon seizure, the red-flagged pirates would slay all occupants aboard the ship and take no prisoners. In fact, one theory attributes the origin of the name Jolly Roger to this ruby pennant. French privateers once flew a red flag they called Jolly Rogue, meaning pretty red, and sharing a phonetic similarity to Jolly Roger. However, no evidence connects the two phrases historically speaking. Because of this grim reputation that the red flag amassed, sailors were known to jump ship when witnessing the skull and crossbones switched out for the bloody red. Number 8. Blackbeard's Technique Pirate history is rich with individuals whose exploits solidified the longevity of their notoriety long after their passing. Names like Calico Jack and Captain Kidd continue to resonate with infamy from the daring criminal feats they accomplished centuries ago. But no pirate is quite as famous as Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. He earned this nickname due to his thick, menacing facial hair, which stood out prominently amid his overall fearsome appearance. Victims targeted by Blackbeard were so intimidated by his looks that he rarely needed to turn to violence to get what he wanted. His looming presence was typically motivating enough. His threatening aura wasn't the result of natural chance, though, as the legendary pirate employed a unique tactic to emphasize his grizzliness. Weaved into the locks of his whiskers were chunks of hemp, giving his beard an abnormal thickness and shape. He would then light it on fire before commandeering a ship, instilling fear in the hearts of sailors as his beard billowed smoke and his face was ablaze. Other accessories to his frightening garb included a red coat lined with at least a pair of knives, pistols, and swords if not more. Number 7. Ship Secrets Going off the impressions made by the films of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, it would appear as if there were some sort of rules and regulations to being a pirate, a type of code of honor among thieves if you will. But nearly every ship had its own set of rules, limitations, and code of conduct that were as varied as the ships on which they sailed. Decisions such as chore duties, divvying up loot, and the aims of those on board were typically determined by the captain, and one pirate on a ship may have had a completely different set of guidelines from a pirate on another ship. Pirate ships were often small and yet heavily manned, and the requirements for those aboard would change with the aims of the crew. After all, not every scallywag engaged in the same activities. A pirate earned the title by being a criminal at sea, but those crimes would range from theft to arson to charges much more dreadful. One constant among most ships, though, was how pirates would settle their differences. There was to be no fighting between crewmates aboard the ship, as all disputes were to be settled on land only. Number 6. Pirates Brew with brands like Captain Morgan, Sailor Jerry's, and Kraken, it's easy to mistake straight shots of rum as the go-to drink of choice for pirates. The scoundrels that scoured the Seven Seas, however, actually preferred their alcohol with a twist. Called Grog, this drink originated with British sailors who would mix rum with their water to decontaminate it and make their main source of hydration last longer. Pirates had their own spin on the beverage, though, by adding lemon juice and sugar into the concoction. The addition of citrus helped fend off scurvy, a common affliction among buccaneers. As many pirates would make their way into the Caribbean Sea during their travels, rum was often plentiful, thus making it the common base for this unique brew. And when sugar, lemon juice, or water were scarce, these sea robbers would opt to mix their rum with whatever liquid they could find in hopes of making it last just a bit longer. Number 5. Valued Piercings 
Big hats, peg legs, eye patches, and a jug of rum are just some of the most common accessories for a pirate, but their most valued accoutrement would most likely be their earrings. These pieces of jewelry served a multitude of purposes, all while dangling from a pirate's ear. Firstly, they served as protection. Cannon fire on a ship was thunderous and could be just as damaging to the eardrums as they were frightening. In response to this, pirates would hang chunks of wax from their piercings, then stick them into their ears like earplugs before firing their weapons. They also acted as an insurance policy should the pirate meet an untimely demise. Not wanting to be left at sea, the earrings of a buccaneer would be used to fund funeral arrangements. Some individuals would go so far as to have their originating port inscribed on their jewelry so as to guarantee they were laid to rest at home. But they also served less practical uses, as superstitions surrounding earrings strengthened among the pirate community. Many claimed hoop earrings could better your eyesight, while others believed they could cure seasickness, and some even believed a gold earring could keep you from drowning. However, these beliefs, especially the last one, were disproved time and again throughout history. Number 4. Unburied Treasure when it comes to finding a pirate's hoard of gold doubloons and pierced gems, most people might assume it to be buried on some distant island, only accessible to those wielding an age-old map. Before you bust out your shovel and go searching for that X marks the spot, though, the truth is that most pirates never bothered to bury their treasure at all. In fact, the majority of the items sought by these sea-bound raiders were essentials that could be put to use immediately. Pirates often targeted cargo ships carrying goods across the Atlantic Ocean, things like lumber, animal hides, and cloth that could be taken to fit the needs of the ship. Others prioritized loot including food, liquor, and weapons, which individual buccaneers could simply consume or carry at their leisure. Thus, there was little value in burying a pirate's treasure trove, at least for most. Captain William Kidd was recorded as having buried some of his treasure in New York. However, this was dug up and sent to England by the local governor as evidence against the pirate captain. Number 3. Lady Pirates Grizzled, bearded, dirty, and dangerous, quintessential pirates are often portrayed as men exhibiting a blend of devious ferocity and daring bravado. But men weren't the only marauders to take to the high seas with a cutlass and a flintlock. While they weren't as common among the ranks of cutthroats, women served on pirate crews throughout history. Two of the most famous female pirates were Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. These two women came from wholly different backgrounds but somehow managed to work aboard the same ship under the command of Captain Calico Jack Rackham. Reed grew up disguised as a boy in order to guarantee shelter for herself and her mother with her paternal grandmother whose care was contingent on the perceived progress of a male heir in the family. Reed went on to join the military, still disguised as a man, where she served off and on until her ship was commandeered by Calico Jack, who conscripted her to his crew along with other English sailors. Bonnie, on the other hand, grew up in America where she fell in love with a pirate. After marrying, she soon found him to be dishonorable, as he became an informant for the governor, thus betraying the pirate friends she had made along his side. She ran off with Calico Jack with whom she had a romantic relationship during their travels. Both women were caught along with the rest of Calico Jack's crew in 1720. While the rest of their shipmates received capital punishment for their crimes, Bonnie and Reed claimed pregnancy and had their lives spared being sentenced to prison instead. Reed passed due to fever, but some accounts say Bonnie escaped with help from her father and went on to live a pleasant family life. Number 2. Worse Than the Plank in popular media portrayals of life on the seven seas, whether it be Pirates of the Caribbean, Peter Pan, or Muppet Treasure Island, capture by pirate typically results in being forced to walk the plank. In truth, though, the salty sea dogs of the past preferred much different methods for handling their prisoners. Those taken captive were sometimes used as hostages, a practice dating back thousands of years. One of the most famous people detained by pirates was the great Julius Caesar, who was captured in 75 BCE. It is said that he spent his time with these pirates with songs and poetry, though once his ransom was paid, Caesar had the pirates crucified for their crimes. Those who weren't lucky enough to be worth seeking ransom were instead slain in gruesome, torturous ways. The most popular method was called keel hauling, a process by which a person would be cast overboard with large weights strapped to their legs, left to drag and drown beneath the ship's keel. One way or another, this was a lethal, painful punishment. That's not to say the plank wasn't used at all, as some evidence supports it as a seldom used, psychologically torturing experience. However, it didn't occur nearly as commonly as novels, films, and television might have you think. Number 1. Gay Marriage Despite the persistent appearance of same-sex relationships throughout history and the relative wide acceptance portrayed today, many same-sex couples continue to face challenges from governments and society when it comes to marriage. But in the most popular era of piracy between 1500 and 1830, marriage between two men was fairly common practice among pirates. 
Called Maitlotich, this union allowed pirates to contractually share their plunder and possessions and leave their posthumous belongings to their partner. Historians have speculated that some of these partnerships may have developed into romantic relationships. However, a more common theory is that they would simply share their winches. 